everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jack A. Elias. I'm the seventh dean of medicine and biologic sciences at Brown University and the inaugural senior vice president for health affairs uh, at Brown. Before we go any further, there are a few things I want to cover. First, I don't need to tell this group how unusual these times are. I never expected, and I know you never expected, to be celebrating the commitment to medicine ceremony this way. This year, I've done a virtual match day, a virtual degree conferral ceremony, a virtual reunion, and now a virtual white coat ceremony. I can tell you that each was unique, and I can also share with you the fact that gathering this way does not diminish in any way from the significance of your accomplishments uh, or what we are trying to celebrate. Second, as Dean of the School of Medicine at Brown University, I wanna welcome all the parents, family members, spouses, and significant others and friends to your loved ones, hopefully only ever virtual white coat ceremony. If there is a silver lining to this whole process, it is the fact that I'm told we will have up to 700 people on this Zoom line this evening. The church where we normally meet can only hold 300 to 400, and so let's make lemonade out of lemons uh, for that for the moment. Importantly, I want to convey to the MD class of 2024 some wonderful things. You are a wonderful class. You're one of the largest classes of MD students at Brown with 144 members. You're an impressively diverse group, ethnically, racially, and geographically. You hail from 34 states and the District of Columbia. And you come from a variety of countries by birth or citizenship, including Sri Lanka, Nigeria, Russia, and Sweden. Some of you just graduated from Brown a few months ago, while some of you have medicine as a second career. In your young lives, you've already published research, worked for AmeriCorps, Engineers Without Borders, Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti, and the National Institute of Health. You have practiced law, owned businesses, served our country, and many of you are former athletes. One of you is even an ordained minister. But whatever you've done before you came here, what I need to tell you now is that you're entering the best profession in the world. Today, when you don your white coat, you will officially enter into the world of medicine. This is both a privilege and a great responsibility. You will have the privilege of being a trusted advisor in the lives of your patients. You will hold their secrets and be with them through momentous occasions in their lives, both good and bad. You will also have grave responsibility to all those lives. You'll be committed to keeping your patients safe to making them well, and to always put your patient's welfare first, even before your own. You will have days with impressive successes, and you're going to have days with frank failure. In both cases, you must commit yourself to always striving to do better and to be a lifelong learner. Now, one of the joys of being able to give this talk is having the podium and allowing myself to make a few important points on this momentous day. There are four points that I wanna bring forth to all of you. First, you need to find your passion. You will have wide ranging experiences over the next four years. You need to participate in each and every one of them with gusto as you work to find your passion in the complex and wonderful world of medicine. You need to get yourself in a position where every day when you walk downstairs and get ready to go outside to do X, whatever X is, for the next 6, 8, 10, 12 hours uh, during that day, uh, you need to be in a position where it puts a smile on your face. If you get a smile on your face, you know that you're in the right place and you've used your time at Brown Medical School uh, to optimal ability. Point number two please listen to your patients. They have a story to tell you, a life history to share with you, and they're your partners in this endeavor. Third is that I need you to commit to advancing knowledge. 
It's your responsibility to ensure that the next generation of physicians is better at treating diseases than we are. I vividly recall being a medical student in the laboratory of Dr. Peter Knoll. He realized that there was a chromosomal translocation in specific patients with leukemia. I then got to watch as others defined that as the BCR able translocation and others developed the drug Gleevec to block the protein that came from that translocation, which was the driving force behind chronic myelogenous leukemia. I got to watch from a basic discovery in a laboratory through to a pill that took people who were going to die and amazingly changed their lives. That is just a part of what you can experience as you go forward. My plea to you is to keep your eyes open, keep your thinking caps on, and remember medicine is far from perfect. It needs you now more than ever, and all you need to do is look at the pandemic we're experiencing to know how little we actually do know. The last point that I want to make is that you need to accept the mantle of the mentor and teacher. I know you're sitting there saying, I'm not the mentor or the teacher, I'm the first year medical student, and that is absolutely correct, but it won't be long. It won't be long before you are the mentor and you are the teacher, and I encourage you to grab that, take hold of it, uh, and enjoy passing on knowledge to the next generation. Let me close by pointing out that although today's ceremony is virtual, today's white coat ceremony is still in many ways a family day. You're here representing your extended families and you're becoming a member of a new family. That is the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University family. During the next four years, please remember that the faculty and alumni are here for you and are massively committed to your growth, your development, and your success. Please accept their mentorship and guidance as the years progress and the challenges present themselves. Congratulations, class of 2024. Someday we will get together and celebrate in person. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Elias. Um, I wanna warmly welcome the students and all of their friends and family who are watching with us today. Uh, my name is Will Hogan, and I'm a fourth year student in my last year here. I was incredibly honored to be asked to join you in celebrating your entrance into the medical profession and to speak to you about the purpose and meaning of the white coats that we're giving out today. This is truly one of the most joy-filled days of the year for our administration, the faculty and students, because we've gathered virtually an enormous chorus of people to celebrate the culmination of years, even lifetimes of sacrifice, selflessness, and hard work that have gone into positioning you to be able to perpetuate the humble goodness of being in medicine and to commit yourself to the care of others. Before I say anything else, I want you as students to remember the gratitude that you feel on this day. It's the most practical advice that I can give you collectively and far more important than any of my musings on medicine or the symbolism of the white coat. For so many of your family, friends, and those who deeply love you, this is the day. The day they celebrate you blossoming into your career and calling having an opportunity to pursue your dreams in a way that was perhaps once unthinkable or inaccessible. You have each worked very hard and deserve your spot in the medical school class many times over, and you'll succeed here. But I ask that you carry forward this deepest sense of gratitude for those who have sacrificed much to get you to medical school as well. Gratitude sustains you and makes your life full. Practicing gratitude protects your happiness and replenishes your empathy and it becomes a magnetic force for you to rely on connections with your loved ones and those who support you, those who have always supported you from before this dream of being in medicine ever took root. Not only have they helped bring you here, but they'll sustain you and become your truest compass as you change the medical system and it changes you. Okay, so on to the white coat. Now, I want you to know that I cherish my blessings too, and I have had the incredible privilege of being the son of a physician a general internist who provides primary care for adults. And he happens to be the greatest doctor in the world. My father is the representation of what I think every doctor should be. He's patient, humble, hardworking, slow to speak and quick to listen, but wise and thoughtful in a way that is rooted in a deep and selfless compassion. 
I know that by training here, you will all develop into physicians like this. My father also happens to be an exceptional golfer, and he has been since he was a little boy. That's his way of recovering from the hard work of being in medicine. And as I was growing up, there was always a copy of the golf classic, Harvey Pennick's Little Red Book, lying around the house somewhere, hidden in plain sight with intention so that I might learn a thing or two about the game. Pennick was a 20th century golf teacher who taught numerous legendary players. At the end of his life, he partnered with a writer to publish over 100 short reflections, illustrating the most important truths about the game and about life itself in anecdotal form. I became inspired to pursue a similar project throughout medical school, interviewing doctors and patients along the way about what makes a good doctor great. I talked to a lot of people, mostly physicians, and came away with many ideas, but a few common themes that I think I may be able to impart to you using a bit of symbolism. Our image of what a physician is is changing, and I believe this to be a good thing. Nonetheless, as you walk through medical school, you'll have to carry with you the traditional symbols that we've come to associate with doctors. So these are white coats, stethoscopes, reflex hammers. And what you do with these physical objects after your training, whether you use them or leave them in the closet or the drawer, will be up to you. But as you enter medical school, I want you to first try to view them as symbols of the wisdom from doctors before you. The stethoscope should remind you of the central importance of listening to your patient attentively, humbly, and with intention. The stethoscope picks up on the tiniest level of detail, a subtle murmur or heart sound that becomes apparent to the skilled listener. In the same way, picking up on your patient's true concern may require that you have the patients to give them the extra 10 seconds required for them to tell you what's happening with them. The pace of our healthcare system pressures you to neglect this responsibility and to ask your next question, but I assure you that this practice of patient listening will yield better results for you and your patient. The reflex hammer is used to tap and test the function of nerves in different areas of the body. In the same way, there is a level of curiosity and relentless rethinking of your plans for your patients that the best doctors seem to share. They truly want the best for their patients, and although medicine is becoming increasingly formulaic, the good doctor understands that no algorithm was developed specifically for their patient, and often there exists a need to think outside the box. Most doctors also carry a pager still even in 2020. The pager is often viewed as an unfortunate attachment to the hospital on a night when you'd rather be at home. However, I found that what doctors and patients value the most is a physician who pursues work-life balance, but also accepts the full responsibilities of medicine, which include being available for your patients. Even in the small forgotten moments where, for example, your patient is getting anesthesia for a procedure, being present and available for your patients is what distinguishes truly great doctors. And finally, the white coat. We are thrilled to share the opportunity with you to wear a white coat and join the ranks of medicine today. Plain and simple, the symbolism and meaning of the white coat is yours to create. I see it as a blank slate that each of you will carry with you as you enter into the varied experiences in medicine that await you. It represents a responsibility and a privilege to care deeply for the best interests of another even if you eventually choose to leave it hanging in your closet most days. For some of you, it may become the symbol of your responsibility as an advocate to give a voice to those who are not being heard. And for others, it will come to represent compassion, hard work, selflessness, dedication, or even creativity, all of which are skills that have been required of each of you to get where you are today. You'll receive an excellent foundation at Brown through a process that will humble you and grow you. I'm certain that each of you will leave Brown a compassionate and capable doctor, no matter where your career path takes you. Your white coat is sized just for you. You enter medical school grounded in a developed sense of the world and your place in it, one that will be challenged and refined throughout your education and beyond. And from that position, you'll be given the incomparable privilege of entering directly into the circumstances of your patients, into the life and history of the person in the exam room before you seeing them through the present moment of adversity. And nothing is more rewarding. Your white coat will accompany you through these special moments. View your white coat as a blank slate for your experiences and follow your interest and passion through all of your training until you discover that putting on your white coat carries a unique and personal meaning for you. We're so proud and excited for you and we're thrilled to welcome you to Brown and to your career in medicine. Thank you. I also have the privilege of introducing our next speaker, the Cook lecturer, Dr. Tara Shirazian. 
Dr. Tara Shirazian is the founder and president of Saving Mothers, a nonprofit organization dedicated to eradicating the senseless number of preventable maternal deaths and birth-related complications in the developing world. As medical director, she, has served, uh, she developed programming for women in underserved countries that highlight the education and training of unskilled birth attendants, community health workers, and first-line providers in an effort to affect change in maternal mortality worldwide. In 2019, Dr. Shirazian launched Mommy Matters, the first women's health brand to focus on the needs of postpartum women in recovery. Dr. Shirazian is a practicing gynecologic surgeon and associate professor at NYU Langone Medical Center in New York City. She also serves as the director of global women's health in OBGYN and as the director of global women's health at the NYU College of Global Public Health. Dr. Shirazian is frequently called upon by the national media to appear as a women's health expert. She's appeared on CBS This Morning, The Today Show, CNN, and Good Morning America, and has been quoted in major international publications, including Newsweek and The Wall Street Journal. She's a member of Brown's class of 1999 and the MD class of 2003. Please welcome Dr. Shirazian. Thank you so much, William, for that lovely introduction. I have to say of most things, I'm most proud that I graduated from Brown, that I was part of the PLME program, and um, that I went there for eight wonderful years. Uh, I really love Brown and Brown Medical School, um, and I'm honored to speak with you today. So I cannot believe that it's been 20 years since I was at this white coat ceremony and stood in your shoes. And quite interestingly, I can't think of a more appropriate time in history to reflect on being a physician and serving communities nationally and globally. I've spent my career in OBGYN and women's health and started my global nonprofit Saving Mothers over a decade ago. So I'm no stranger to global public health, travel, and the risks inherent in global epidemics and pandemics. Yet in March, when we first learned that a pandemic was sweeping the world and would soon preoccupy every aspect of our lives and health, it was hard to imagine what that would look like. When I first heard from Governor Cuomo that physician volunteers were needed urgently to serve and care for my city, it was hard to envision what I would sign up for in the epicenter of COVID-19. But even though there was a lot of fear and uncertainty, I was sure I needed to do it. I needed to understand the nature of this new disease and I needed to be part of the workforce that would serve the city and its people that I deeply love. No one said that being a physician was easy. No one said there aren't sacrifices in dedicating your life to the care of others. No one said there aren't amazing days and also very challenging ones, but that is the beauty of medicine. It is the most wonderful journey you will ever be on. There is so much beauty in confronting and challenging disease and changing the course of people's lives. In many ways, I feel it's the most real profession there is. There is a rare untouched beauty in sharing moments of vulnerability with your patients. The other amazing thing is that the path that leads you to medicine naturally empowers you to meet these moments of challenge. We learn in becoming doctors the importance of hard work, dedication, commitment, and most importantly, of resilience. The importance of knowing not every day will be your best, but every day is an opportunity to do as much as you can for others and grow yourself as a physician in the process. It's a constant journey of improving yourself and the care that you give others. The other amazing thing about this journey is that you are not alone. You have the greatest team of like-minded, dedicated colleagues and friends who understand what you're going through and celebrate the physician you will become. In times of challenge, 
like COVID-19, I'm in awe of my colleagues. They impress me daily with natural strength, grace, and humility. When I first volunteered at the hospital in the early days of the quarantine in March, the city was shut down. There was no traffic. There were no people on the street. There was an eerie quiet everywhere. It underscored the importance of the work being done in the only active places the hospitals. When I left the hospital the first evening after a long 12 hours, there was a stream of fire trucks, people, cheers, noise, and the largest outpouring of gratitude that I have ever seen in my years as a physician. And I remember thinking in that moment, feeling a bit conflicted, wow, I'm not sure the world understands what we try to do every day for our patients. Because every day is a test of resiliency and every day can be a test of commitment. I feel fortunate to feel that outpouring of love and support most days. Like all of you here, my journey started at Brown in the same rooms and halls that you are in now. And truly, Brown has made me the physician I am today and taught me to believe in myself, follow my passion, as Dean Elias just said, care and consider my patients above myself always, and to strive to be a leader in the community, the country, and the world, as I'm sure many of you will be. At Brown, you will learn all the tools you need to be a great physician. You will have mentors and colleagues that will continue to inspire you throughout your career. And when times are challenging, you will lean on them for support. So congratulations on becoming physicians today. You've chosen an exciting and amazing career. Remember where it all started. Remember today and enjoy the first days of a wonderful journey. It is my honor to welcome you. It is a unique honor to sponsor this white coat ceremony, which is unique itself this year. The BMAA comprises all alumni of the Warren Alpert Medical School, and of course the medical school under its previous names, as well as undergraduate alumni from Brown who earned their medical degrees elsewhere, and faculty members and house staff of the medical school. The mission of the BMAA is to connect medical alumni to the greater Brown community. And a few examples of our activities include the following, sponsoring study breaks and network events for students, hosting students as they travel for their residency interviews, coaching and mentoring students, sponsoring uh, medical alumni community events, supporting the Brown Medical Alumni Fund and providing seed grants for medical student research projects and supporting Dean Elias and his team. The BMAA is the organization that ties all medical alumni together and provides a lifetime network of colleagues that you can tap into for personal or professional advice. And for all of you receiving a white coat today, that relationship starts today. Donning the white coat represents a turning point in your education and in your career. For most of you, up to this point, your education has not included the care of patients. As you go forward, you will have the lives of your patients in your hands. The white coat is a sign to the world of this transition in your life. Welcome to a truly noble profession. We will now recognize each student by showing their names and a photograph or a recorded uh, moment of them putting on their white coats for the very first time.
congratulations to each and every one of you.